Hi, I'm Maria Brisk, and I'm a professor at the Lynch School. Uh, today we're going to share um, research on teaching and learning writing. Um, my interest in the topic of, of writing uh, came about as a um, result of being a second language learner of English. I grew up in Argentina and I studied English since probably about the age of two. And I continued to study throughout uh, my schooling, including the university in Argentina, where I majored in English. Then I came to the US to do a master's at Georgetown in applied linguistics. And I was completely fluent in English and I could read academic text. Um, so, I felt pretty confident about being able to do my studies until I was required to write four original papers for each one of my courses. And that's something that nobody had ever taught me uh, how to do. We, in Argentina, we just took exams in which we had to write, but it wasn't doing research and composing. So I started to cry. I spent my whole first semester crying, trying to write my papers until a friend of mine said, stop crying and I'm gonna teach you how to do it. So, so he did and I successfully passed all my courses. So I married the guy who would let him go. I had my, my own personal writing teacher. So, so that's where my motivation came. And then it further uh, uh, came from looking at what was going on in schools in which children were just being asked either to respond to literature or to, to write personal recounts. And I thought, well, that's not a good preparation for college as the standards claim. So now I'm gonna let Maggie talk about her own experiences. Thank you, Dr. Brisk. Hi everyone, I'm Maggie Henley. I'm an undergraduate at the Lynch School. And though I'm new to this work, I have had the chance to work with Dr. Brisk to delve more deeply into SFL pedagogy with bilingual students in mind. Um, at BC, I'm working toward the Bilingual Education Certificate, um, and through sharing our research, I'm continuing to discover how our findings here inform my future instruction um, as a bilingual educator. Okay, so let's, let's look <clears throat> at um, what we are going, what our study is. So we, uh, what we did was a contrastive analysis between the writing and the teaching that went on in two districts. One uh, district that uh, used uh, SFL informed writing instruction in which students were taught how to write arguments through uh, modeling and uh, writing together and exploring text and writing in groups, etc. And another district that taught how to write in order to pass the argument test required by the states. And they followed a pacing guide throughout all of the schools that just focused on how to write for the requirements um, of the test. Um, so the difference, the um, Teachers at the Roberts, which is the school that used the SFL genres, focus on the genres very specifically, uh, which give you uh, the purpose and the structure and the language each individual genre uh, follows. The school district, the other school district, the Moran, follow the common core text types which are the narrative, informational, explorative, and argument, which are very wide um, 
uh, and the standards are pretty vague. So this study will focus on argument uh, writing and, and the different forms. Um, so the research to date has demonstrated the challenges students face in argument writing due to their levels of cognitive and linguistic development. And one of the main linguistic demands argument writing holds for students is that arguments have a rhetorical rather than a chronological organization, meaning that students have to write ideas organized by theme or in this case, reason and evidence, not necessarily in a logical sequence of events students are usually familiar with in fiction works. It requires logical reasoning to support point of view, which is a later stage of development. Um, and researchers recommend introducing this genre for those reasons um, a little bit later. But language to express a point of view is something that is also still in development. Expressions of point of view are preceded by I think and I believe, which kind of open the door to other opinions, which makes the argument less assertive. Um, and depending on the audience, this might not be appropriate, or it may be, but either way, it opens the door to other opinions. But this has to be done by choice. And at this stage, children just do it. It's not really a choice. So the linguistic resources for evaluative language are not mastered in that way until late childhood, early adolescence. Uh, furthermore, Anderson's research from 2008 posits that a major issue is perspective taking for young writers in argument writing, which aligns with developmental models of self-centered focus or issues with theory of mind. And finally, argument writing as a developmental skill that can be honed through exposure in middle and elementary grades um, promotes mastery in older grades. So this importance of having literature and modeling language through instruction can promote that, um, that mastery later, later grades. And then in our work to kind of unpack students writing and make sense of how they write as a result of development or instructional tasks, the issue around argument versus opinion came up. Now in the Roberts School, the genre of writing was said to be argument, while the Moran School called the genre opinion. An argument, as the literature surrounding this SFL informed genre details, is a written product of writing persuasively. It has key features such as claim, evidence, reasons. Conversely, opinion is an estimation of quality. So the discrepancy between the two comes in the instruction. Robert's students were taught to write arguments. Moran's students, however, were told that they were writing opinion pieces while being taught some of the elements of argument writing. And as such, the instruction of the two sets of students differed in the very labeling of what the students were learning. So as um, Maggie began to mention, argument writing requires um, students to learn what's the purpose of the genre that could be to persuade to or about something, what's the organization, which includes an introduction that has background information, a thesis or claim. Then we have reasons backed by evidence and, and with a conclusion of um, a reinforcement of the position. The other aspect that is very important and that SFL emphasizes where, while the Common Core standards do not, is language. And lang in the language allows to show the author's voice with the audience in mind. And this voice is shown through grammatical um, elements like the types of sentence, the person, modality, evaluative language, and graduation. And we'll see more of this in the examples um, that we'll show in a minute. So as Dr. Brisk was saying, the largest section here of the Roberts teaching um, in the green, you'll see the biggest slice, 
that's language regarding audience. So the idea that audience drives all of the linguistic choices, everything from the way the medium functions, so in this case, how a letter is addressed, to the reasons, the very reasons that are chosen. The audience essentially drives what is written and how it is written. Then you'll see the central claim still on the Roberts side, that's in the yellow. Um, so students sometimes had to make a claim even if they didn't believe that claim. So this practicing of argumenta argumentative skills um, was a big part of the instruction in the Roberts side. Next, we have purpose and relevant issue, which is the blue and the red. These students were taught directly how to persuade, and they were taught how to persuade surrounding issues that concerned them specifically. For example, in our study, they were writing about the heating in the school. Another element was reasons and evidence in this, uh, this side of teaching. They were formed by students' experiences and their own research. Um, and one teacher um, on the Roberts side focused on reinforcement. So you'll see that teal slice, that small slice. On the Moran side, the biggest portion, conversely, the purple, is passing the test. So the entire scope of teaching was under this lens of getting students to pass the test or produce pieces the test would look favor favorably upon. These directly impacted, as I was discussing earlier, the task the students were working on. Now, Another difference between the two is the portion of reasons and evidence. On the Moran side, the reasons and evidence were found in readings, which kind of presented this choppy and disjointed paragraphs of student work. This supports our idea, our idea that writing is a result of instruction and the task. And finally, on the Moran side, the prompt was the claim. There was no really taking a stance or working on those argument, argumentative skills um, on the Roberts side. So all in all, the purpose teaching was non-existent for the Moran students, but it was very significant for the Roberts students. Now the language in regard to audience was also a non-factor in Moran, but was the foundation for all of the work on the Roberts side. So let, let me share uh, a couple of examples to, so that you can see what the writing looks like. Um, on the left, we have an example of a student at the Roberts and on the right at the Moran. And on purpose, I tried to find the best of the examples among the ones we were analyzing. Um, and there are, there are things that both groups uh, knew how to do. Uh, they, they both had a sense that they were writing for the purpose of persuading. Um, and both groups uh, had uh, the elements of the structure, like, like uh, the thesis, and the reasons, evidence, and, uh, and reinforcement appear in some group, in some students, and not uh, in others. Um, where, where the difference comes, is really in the nature of these elements and in the language of these elements. So, for example, if we look at thesis, which is in the red, um, the student at the Roberts has the thesis, we should have zoos. And actually, much later, at the beginning of the second paragraph, she states, the thesis again in a form that is actually better written, animals should be kept in zoos. Then the rest of the thesis is uh, the previewing the reasons that she's gonna have in her paper. Where, and the Moran student um, had a reason that one had to that it was kind of confusing because one had to make it out from all this set of questions like, but people ask this question, are dogs better than pets than cats? Or are cats better pets than dogs? Lots of people have three that have their opinion, but mine is dogs are better. So finally we get to dogs are better, which is um, the thesis. And then 
this student actually repeats a, be a better thesis at the beginning of the second paragraph. Dogs, in my opinion, are better, but not quite uh, finalized. Um, so the the questions and the other the other uh, element or, or that is different is that they talk to the audience. I'll explain. You're talking to the audience. So these features of having questions, of talking to the audience, of using first person, uh, all make uh, the thesis a lot weaker because they open up for uh, questions, open up for other opinions. And the use of a first person and talking directly to the audience makes it more chatty, more familiar. Um, when we go to reasons, they both have reasons, and those are in blue. Um, the Robert student has the reason very straightforward written, in zoos, animals receive better care, and they're protected from their enemies. Actually, that's a little extra reason there that, that she develops better later. In the Moran, uh, piece, there are uh, several reasons together uh, uh, because, they're, because they're easy to train and other things, they like being with people. So, so we have two reasons and one kind of vague sentence, other things, uh, phrase, other things. And, and again, it's uh, it has this feature of talking to the audience. Why you might ask, uh, so um, the, when it comes to evidence, uh, we have it in black there. Um, the Robert student has evidence that come obviously from research. Um, animals in zoos get the best, best veterinarian care. And uh, it has evaluative language like best and protect and amazing uh, that show uh, through language her point of view. Um, in the case of a Moran, um, the, the evidence is an example that was um, drawn from the readings that doesn't support any of the reasons stated above. Um, it, it really supports uh, the fact that dogs can be helpful. Um, the, other, the other awkward uh, aspect of the writing is to include that phrase in source one. Um, that makes the writing uh, choppy. So, so this collection of reasons and evidence are things that the student was fishing out of the two sample text that the student was given to find reasons and evidence. Whereas, whereas in the Roberts, the student had planned and thought about a reason and evidence that supports it from uh, doing the research and working uh, collaborative with the teacher and other students. Um, so it was a coherent uh, paragraph with a reason and evidence uh, supporting it. And then uh, uh, the student at Roberts didn't have a reinforcement of statement and, and in this particular class, that's something the teacher didn't emphasize. In other classes, they did. Um, in the Moran, there is a reinforcement of statement, but it's a, it's a repetition of the thesis, and that's not what a reinforcement is supposed to do. And also, it's full of this talking to the audience, and uh, now we know. And the phrases, like in my opinion, and first person, then again, weaken the strength of the, of the argument. Um, so although 
uh, although both had the elements of, a, of an argument, the way they, they were, the fluency of expression and, and the force of the voice uh, through the appropriate language choices uh, at the Roberts were very different uh, from the Moran. And the students at the Moran, when they um, use this personalized type of language, that's very developmental. And it, that's why, uh, as Maggie said, it's very difficult for students this age to write arguments. So what the Roberts show is that there was development thanks to instruction. Um, so the lessons we learn is that teaching writing as a genre, and in, in this case informed by SFL, uh, allowed students to learn how to write original papers. And even if they still show a number of, of um, struggles that elementary students go through, the students have had made the effort and go through the experience of writing an original paper. The, the students at the Moran, what they had learned is how to respond uh, to test prompts and use uh, text, uh, re, uh, text sources, but they had not learned how to write an original piece. So those students are gonna have the same problem I had when I came to the States, that nobody had taught me how to write original papers. So they are gonna have difficulty in college if nobody does that, as I had uh, myself. I mean, the Roberts teachers are not blind to the fact that these, their students have to pass these tests. And so a few weeks before the test, they teach them all these things about how you respond to a prompt and how you look for reasons and evidence in a text. But the students already know what an argument is and how you write it and how you use language for it. Um, so that's the danger of teaching to the test. I don't know whether Maggie, you wanna say something to our audience? I think this is important work and and I agree when you say that you know this this impacts the rest of of our students educational lives um, and even beyond so uh, thank you Dr. Brisk for allowing me to contribute to this and and share our thoughts on this issue. Okay so I hope you enjoy it and I hope you remember what you learned. <laughs>